Hello survivors and welcome to today's video. So we're going to be looking at another mod on console today and obviously these mods aren't just on console but these are the ones that have been ported to console for us to be able to play. We are on Xbox and this mod is amazing. So this is a big one so it might take a little while to get through it all but this is Automated Arc and it is amazing. So let's take a look at the engrams list and if we type in here AA you'll see all the things that are available in the automated arc. So the first thing is this AA control console. And that's the thing that is going to make it all work. So it says it's the heart and soul of automated arc. You need one of these in the base for the magic to happen. Put it in the center of your base. Be sure to enable auto sorting after you've set up your OCD storage, which we will look at in a minute. Don't say I didn't warn you. So this is awesome. I'll show you how it looks once it's down. Here it is. So we've got a few bits in here that haven't been sorted into anything yet. But if I go and grab something from the storage, so these are the OCD storage. You've got three different types. So you'll have like, like a cupboard really. You get your small box, you get your wooden box, and then you get your vault. So it's kind of similar to that. So you get your OCD vault, which doesn't look like this. It looks a bit more like a fridge. And then you get a marble version, and then you get, you know, th this metal version here. And so you can see you can change the writing on them to whatever's in them. So if we look on the wheel, if we hold Y, use default name, you can change the name here, and then you can change that to use custom name. And your custom name will show up on there, so you don't have to keep putting signs on them or name them and have a look at the description. So say now I take out... Let's take out some structures from here. Let's take out a couple of these trees. And we'll go and put them in the control console. Now you can have this do it on its own, so when anything goes in there, it just sorts it automatically. But we don't like to do that. We like to just, at the end of the day, do a manual sort. Manual sort, and you can see those two trees have gone, and they will have gone back into their storage. So how do you get things to stay in their storage? This was a little finicky at first, but it's had a few updates, and it's a lot better now. So you can either go to the OCD menu here, and it'll show you everything that is in there. But I find that, that this way is a little bit tricky because you can see my cursor is going up and down the ticks. It's not ideal because I need to get to close menu and I can't see where my cursor is. There we go, close menu. So the actual best way to do your storage is to go in here, show OCD menu at the bottom, and then you can use your cursor because we didn't have one a minute ago and that was weird and I used to think that my game had crashed, I'd have to leave the game and come back in, it was really annoying. So here, I usually do select all, I'll put in everything that I want in there. This is just initially when you first start, if you put everything in there that you want to stay in there, you can either tick them individually or go to select all, confirm, and then I like to use the d-pad to go across because it gets a bit annoying having to use the thumbstick all the time. Close menu, and you could do the same for all of them. And once you've done that, it will remember then what is supposed to be in those vaults. And so, say now you come home, like we've got one over here, which is just for mats, for materials. So let's just take some of these out. And then say now you come back from a day of farming. I'm a little bit encumbered now, so we're walking a little bit slow. But say now you come back from a day of farming. You've been on a massive farming trip. You just open this. Put all this stuff in there. Go to manual sort. And it'll put it in exactly the vault that it needs to be in. So if we take a look at the options here, you've got enable auto sorting. So you don't have to click manual sort every time. It will do it for you. Disable ally looking. Right, I haven't quite tried this, but I'm going to have a go. Disable ally looking and just see if this works. Because I hate ally looking on these creatures. And there you go. Everything that is in the radius of that control console will now disable ally looking so it's easier to line your dinos up. It's absolutely awesome. Now there doesn't seem to be a way to re-enable it because it just stays on disable. So if we go back in now, it's still just disable so it looks like that's how it will stay. So enable pulling from dinos. So we don't have this on because sometimes we like to store some of our stuff on our dinos. You know, like if we've got like a kit that we want to go out with, we could just have our own little vault for those, I suppose. But yeah, we're not keen. Sometimes I like to keep a taming trap on a dino or something. So 
we don't tend to enable that, but you can do. It may take a little while before it will take stuff from your dino if you've got stuff on it. So let's test this out. So we've got Sub-Zero here. Sub-Zero has got my structures on that I would like to take out and about with me. So those structures should be assigned to the structure's vault. Let's have a look at the OCD menu and see if we can find like stone walls and stuff in there. Yeah, stone foundation. Right, so stone foundation is in the structure's vault. It should go in there. So if I enable pulling from dinos, might take a little while, but it should take some stuff out of this dino and put it in its vault. So this is a little bit, it doesn't work all the time I've found, but say now I try to transfer this from this inventory into my own, don't work. So some of the features of it aren't working quite as intended, I think, at the moment. Unless I'm wrong, I mean the enable pulling from dinos doesn't seem to work every time. Well, this is what I have found anyway, let me know if you found differently, but the pulling from dinos doesn't seem to work all that well at the moment. Exclude structures. I did do some tests on this, so if you go into the inventory of the control console, there is an option to exclude structures down here. If you click on that, it will bring up a list of all the structures that you can ignore. Now, the one thing that annoyed me is that all of the OCD storage are just listed as OCD storage. It doesn't give them the custom name you gave them. It does with the fridges, but it doesn't with the vaults. I haven't tried this with the marble and the wood ones, just the metal, but it, it didn't give them their titles. It just calls them OCD metal vault. So it would take ages to find out which one it is that I want to ignore. Because for instance, we've got an ocean base, which is a little bit further away from the base, but not far enough that it doesn't trigger the pulling when you manual sort. So every time I keep my scuba in there and I do a manual sort at base, it takes it all out. So what I tested was I, I typed in the search bar like box or something. I can't remember what exactly I typed in. I didn't record it. But so it only showed up like the wooden storage boxes that we had around base. I ticked them all off and clicked confirm on exclude structures. And as you can see in this video, it will ignore those. So it won't pull from them. I tried to manually pull. I went back to the box and what I put in there was still in there. So when I tried this with a metal vault, that was like the vanilla metal vault, not the OCD stuff. I couldn't find it in the menu. So I wasn't able to exclude it. So we put a wooden cupboard down there and for some reason some of the storage boxes it pulls from some of them it doesn't pull from every time they patch it they do tend to fix something fingers crossed it all gets fixed and have certain items that we want to be kept separate in a separate box where it doesn't get manually sorted every time but you can have a play around with this and see what works for you we'll go through actually we'll go through every engram bit by one by one okay so we'll go through all the AA things. Right, so this, the helper remote. I haven't used this too much, but I have used it to pick up structures and it works really, really well. The wood pile, the wood pile looks like this. And if you fill this with wood or spark, it'll distribute it to your torches. It's amazing and it looks fantastic. Okay, the mortar, AA mortar and pestle. Here it is, looking amazing. So we've just put ours on a table. It doesn't come on a table. But say now we go in here and we want to make spark powder. We click A, we push the right thumbstick in, and it gives us enough to make, ah, this is another thing, one, one spark powder. So you select pull multiplier, and what the pull multiplier does is pull from your resources that you've got stored into here in order for you to make what you want to make. So if we set the pull multiplier for spark powder to 100, and confirm, and now we push A, Put the right thumbstick in. It's pulled the right amount to make 100. Well, it'll be 101 because I already pulled earlier. And then you can craft that. Once you're done crafting, what we'll do is come here, go to manual sort, and then it will put everything from the mortar and pestle where it needs to be. It's amazing. So now we go to the cooking pot and we want to make a mind wipe tonic. We'll go consumables, crafted foods. We've got mind wipe tonic here. The multiplier is set at one. I only want to make one. So we'll click A right thumbstick in and it's pulled everything we need to make the mind wipe tonic it's on auto craft so that's the thing with the aa cooking pot by the way it's always on auto craft even though it says enable auto craft when you first log in for us at least at the moment as we're making this video we have to like press enable auto craft come out of it you have to mess about with this quite a lot so that's a bit finicky sometimes it'll work and it'll go to it'll where it says disable but um, yeah, sometimes it doesn't. So all of these AA structures work the same way. 
with the AA fridge you can actually store organic poly in here as well as leech blood, antidotes, everything so all that stuff that you couldn't store before and it would spoil real easy, you can store it in there, it's just amazing right what else have we got, I'm not going to go through absolutely everything because you can play about with this yourself but We'll just take a look at a few of them because they're amazing. So the AA engram pod, you can save your current engram layout to relearn when you mind wipe. So how good is that? Because it's always annoying going and having to relearn everything after you've mind wiped. It takes the mix. So with this, you don't have to. It's just amazing. You get the dino leash. So you get the spoiling bin. So this is the meat spoiler. It's like a big barrel with some ooze just like pulsating out the top of it. Pretty minging. But if we put the meat in... So give it a minute, give it a minute, and you can see it's spoiling a lot faster than what it usually would. However, if you want to spoil meat quickly, I would just use the toilet technique, to be honest, that we showed you in our toilet video. <laughs> it sounds weird that we made a toilet video, but yeah, we did. And that is the best way to spoil meat. But once you're quite advanced, you'll just end up with a load of it in the trough anyway, so it's, it's, it's no biggie really once you progress. Right, the compost bin. Now this is awesome. If you use that, with the fertilizer manager. Fantastic, because we like a lot of plants, right? And I was just like, oh, do you know, I can't be bothered to be refilling these plants all the time, because I'm sick of doing it. I want loads of plants. Obviously, the landscaping mod comes in amazing for that as well, but I like having, you know, crop plots around too. And we've got a load of potato plants going all the way down the side of the building. So we've got this secret bit under here, because we do not want this is disgusting. Wait till you see. Wait, oh, it's minging. It's minging. Wait till you see the um, the toilet. I'll show you this one first. So this is the compost bin. It acts the same way as the new dung beetle, except it doesn't produce oil. So it'll collect all the poop from all your dinos and it'll turn it into fertilizer. It's absolutely amazing. It can carry up to three hundred. And then there's this. Oh, that is minging. When I first put one down, I put it in the house. And I, I was like, oh, we cannot have that in the house. So that's why we've put it all underneath the building because it's disgusting. So this is the fertilizer manager. And so this will take the fertilizer from that. So what you can do is you go here and you can go pull fertilizer. It will pull the fertilizer from there into here and then fill crops. So it was, you can see, before we do it, you can see it's at 300 out of 300. We'll go fill crops. And it's now at 278 out of 300 because it's filled all of the crops that needed filling. Now we'll look at this one. 274, we will pull fertilizer in here, it's now back up to 300, and that one is now at 252, because this has pulled the fertilizer from that, and we can refill every crop plot at once with that, and it is amazing. This is my green screen where I take pictures of things for my edits, <laughs> do you ignore that? But yeah, in that big box is where the anthill is, which we showed in the previous video with the frog. So we won't be talking about that today, because we do have a separate video on that. So you've got the AA generator, and this is awesome because here you see balanced generators. So if you have other generators in the area, and the area is very large as well, you can check the radiuses, and the radiuses are insane. Let's have a put that on now and have a little look around. And we'll go outside and show you how big this range is. Look at that. Like our base is pretty big, and this thing goes all the way around. It is so good. And so, say now you've got a building down there that you want powered, you can put a generator just in the radius of that, and then you can balance your generators, so it will make sure that they've all got gasoline in. It's fantastic. And it's the same for the feeding troughs as well, the AA feeding troughs. We'll go and take a look at those now. So our feeding troughs are here, because we don't like them, because they look a bit too tacky. They look like the tech troughs. So we've hidden them under the floor. But say now, let's see, these are all 136, 100, 100. So that one's only got 36, the rest have got 100 in. If we go into the inventory of one and we press balance troughs, you see it changes. Now they all have 49 or 48. So, like, if there's, like, dinos over that side that will eat more from this trough, they won't get to the other trough. Everything is balanced. It's absolutely amazing. It is so cool. Another amazing thing are these egg collectors. So ours is up here. 
They look so cute. So these will pick up eggs, so they're like the new oviraptor. They'll pick up all the eggs that every dinosaur is laying. So we've got hundreds of these. We are on Mango Nation servers, so these eggs drop quite often. Quicker than you can make the kibble, basically. And it's fantastic. So you can change it to uh, disable unfertilized egg pickup, enable fertilized pickup, disable that as well. The radius on these is massive as well, same with all the other stuff. So what we do is we have one which is for unfertilized eggs, which is next to the kitchen so that I can make a kibble with it. And then the one upstairs, if we hop up there, is at the back of the room over here. The radius is so big it will do the whole building. And this will just pick up the fertilized eggs because this is the breeding area. And it's got a little fridge next to it for the fertilized eggs. Uh, with the fridges, you can change the names on those. I'll show you now. So we change this name to Fert Eggs. Right, it still says OCD Vault, however, if we go here to use custom name, Fert Eggs, it's amazing. Right, most of the AA stuff is crafted in this. We don't like it, so we've hidden it in here, because it looks a bit too techy for what we're going for. But this is the AA workbench, and this is where you craft most of the stuff. And there is so much stuff. The Dino Healer which it's actually called the medical station. It heals dinos and players over time. So you put it down, it looks like a little teleporter. I'll show you, I'll show you. So it's like a little teleporter. And you put med brews in it. You put your dinos on it, or you. And then you enable healing. And it heals really quickly as well. It's fantastic. It looks a bit of an eyesore, so we don't. We keep ours in the cupboard. And we just get it out once it's needed. Once, once it's needed. <laughs> So the forges, they tend to pull from the dinos. So these will pull whenever you get home. We found it was pulling only to this, to this forge. So you can disable pulling, which we have done, but it keeps re-enabling it. So yeah, you want to keep an eye on that one because it, when you get home, it'll pull it into that one instead of your big forge. And this one, you want pulling on. Well, we do anyway, but we're buzzing with the size of the forge and the extra details on it. And the same, like I showed you earlier, the cooking pot just looks incredible with it being so tiny. Oh, and this, yeah, the dehydrator. So let's get some meat and put it in here so I can show you. It does this with um, regular cooked meat and cooked prime. We put this in here. You don't have to put the oil and the spark in here. Look, it just automatically will make the jerky. It's got the options in here, you know, for the regular ones, but you just put your cooked meat or your cooked prime meat in here and it will just make it automatically. So we've got loads of jerky. So you've got your ice box. It doesn't usually have a plant in it. That's from the landscaping mod. Like before you get a fridge, you can make ice in order to be able to store your food better. So you've got the vacuum and the trash can, which we don't use because we like throwing things around and picking them up and stuff. So we don't want everything, you know, if we're dropping something for each other, because the vacuum will suck up everything off the ground for your controller console. Once Aberration and Extinction come out, it'll probably be really handy because it works for earthquakes. So it'll pick up, you know, all the bits probably, I imagine, when green gems come out of the floor and fungal wood and stuff in the earthquakes, this will probably pick it up, which sounds amazing. And then it says it picks up owl pellets and distributes them to the nearby gachas, which is just perfect. So yeah, that will be handy, I think once the later expansions come out. And then the trash can has OCD pulling and has a button to manually delete anything inside of it. So yeah, I'm a bit concerned about that one, so we've not been using that one much, but you can let us know what your experiences are with this. Then you've got the veggie crate. So you put berries and veggies inside them, add them to the pulling list, and you can start the pulling into this. But I've got my veggies going into the fridge, so I would rather it that way. It just makes it less complicated for me. So there is a plant commander as well, which we haven't used because we don't have any of these plants at base at the moment. But you can set all of the nearby crop plot ranges and targeting. So that probably will come in handy, I imagine, at some point. Like, so we're not too bad here. So, all right, the repair station. Let me get the repair station. We have got one made in here. Now, the repair station looks pretty cool. But we're not going for anything too tacky, so we keep that in the cupboard and we'll get it out if we need to. It can repair anything in the inventory at the push of a button. And with automated pulling, it can repair damaged structures in the area over time. So that is cool. So if you've had an attack on your base and you can't be bothered going around repairing everything one structure at a time, you can use this to do it. Like I said, we've not used that really at all. But I imagine it's probably quite handy if you're in a dangerous area or you're on PvP or something. Right, now the gardening station. 
this for me is a biggie so it looks just like this on the engram list used to make growable resources and can be used to irrigate crops by snapping pipes to it however let's go and take a look at it so it's this little bench here um, not the one with the watering can this one with the mushrooms growing out of it so look at this now some of these don't apply because we don't get fungal wood on the island we don't get sap we don't get you know any of these spe special mushrooms and we don't get silk however look redwood sapling rare mushrooms rare flowers and you can grow all these so all you need to do is put some rare flowers in there or sap or you know mushrooms i'll show you now to make we have got some of these seeds already in but i'll just show you so let's grab some rare mushrooms and we'll put them in so it doesn't look like you can pull for this one so i'm going to put them in manually and then you'll see this is lit up this mushroom so i could craft 35 of these seeds with the mushrooms that i've got we've been growing our mushrooms here as you can see that's why we've got so many if i click one it'll start making me a seed that i can plant and these ones can be planted in anything so they can be planted in small medium or large which is brilliant because i hate when you have to use a medium or above uh, this here is supposed to be imprinting kibble it instantly imprints the dino it says feed it to the baby after claiming it right after claiming it to instantly imprint it but it didn't work for me so if anybody's got any tips on how to use this one i'm not sure how to use it it didn't work for me and i'd like to know how because i did make a few but it doesn't work it takes like 30 dino eggs to make one um, but that won't be a problem if you've got your egg collector and you're on a decent server shout out to mango nation <laughs> So yeah, these little seeds, you can plant them. The mushroom seeds don't have any plant coming out of them. So I, I've actually like put my own plants in here with the landscaping mod. And then just planted them because the crop plots remain like empty on top. They are growing mushrooms, but there is no visual plant coming out of them for the mushrooms, unfortunately. The rare flowers, on the other hand, I'll show you what they look like. They look so good. They're as nice as the lemons and the sav roots, the citronella and the sav roots. Look, they've got pink flowers on them. So they're really pretty. So I've put some of them outside the base. And those are the ones that, like I said, grow with the rare flowers. And then the sap ones, oh, the sap ones are just adorable. We've got a few of these knocking about. So we don't have to have a sap tap down in the redwoods. We just use this now. And they're like these really cute little trees. Look at that. They are so adorable. So yeah, love them. Love the gardening stations so much. The fact that we can grow these resources that are quite rare. So, you know, you have to spend the time at first trying to find them initially. And once you have, you can start making your own. And I just love that. So there's loads more stuff you can make. You can make a grinder. It's got a grind all button. It can grind ingots into raw metal. Yeah. And it can use electricity. The grinder has OCD sorting in it too. So you can set all your junk to go into the grinder. You know when you pick up stuff that you just don't want, you can set that to go straight to the grinder. you got your turret genie. Chem bench, like I said, we haven't made one of those because we're going for more of a rustic look and we find that the, the mortar, the AA mortar and pestle is really fast as well. So we, we like that. But this does refrigerate materials as well. So that's really good. And then the polymer converter. We did make one of these and we do use it. So you can convert your poly, your organic poly, even though you can store it in the fridge now, you can actually convert it as well. And it is a one-to-one -one ratio, so you're not losing anything in the process. So it looks like the, um, you know, the control console from, I think it came out with Gen 1 or Gen 2. I can't remember which one it came out with. I think it was Gen 2. Either way, it looks like that, but you transmute your poly in here. And you can also make these corrupted nodes and stuff that come with extinction. And you can actually make polymer out of the corrupted nodes. We've been using it to convert our organic poly into regular poly. And it is brilliant. So that is Automated Arc. I'm loving using it. It has just been amazing. When we first started and it wasn't working quite right. And we didn't understand why things were disappearing from certain places. The Dino Lord's like, oh no, we'll just use the regular stuff. I don't want to be using this. It's too complicated. It's ridiculous. It's not working. But it was just we didn't really understand it properly. And uh, shout out to 
Echo for teaching me about how to use it because I didn't have a clue before he taught me. You are an absolute legend and this has changed our game so much so let me know if I missed anything or if there's anything that I wasn't sure about that you can help me with because I would like to learn more about it but that is the extent of my knowledge on it. I hope it helps somebody. If it does please leave a like on the video and maybe consider subscribing. We've got loads of arc on here and we've got so much more to come. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and take care. Get the bell on.